The Corps of Royal Engineers, usually just called the Royal Engineers RE, and commonly known as the Sappers, is one of the core of the British Army. It provides military engineering and other technical support to the British Armed Forces and is headed by the Chief Royal Engineer. The Regimental Headquarters and the Royal School of Military Engineering are in Chatham in Kent, England. The Corps is divided into several regiments, barracked at various places in the United Kingdom and around the world. Topic history The Royal Engineers trace their origins back to the military engineers brought to England by William the Conqueror, specifically Bishop Gundulf of Rochester Cathedral, and claim over 900 years of unbroken service to the Crown. Engineers have always served in the armies of the Crown, however, the origins of the modern corps, along with those of the Royal Artillery, lie in the Board of Ordnance established in the 15th century. In Woolwich in 1716, the Board formed the Royal Regiment of Artillery and established a Corps of Engineers, consisting entirely of commissioned officers. The manual work was done by the artificer companies, made up of contracted civilian artisans and labourers. In 1772, a soldier artificer company was established for service in Gibraltar, the first instance of non-commissioned military engineers. In 1787, the Corps of Engineers was granted the royal prefix and adopted its current name and in the same year a Corps of Royal Military Artificers was formed, consisting of non-commissioned officers and privates, to be led by the RE. Ten years later the Gibraltar Company, which had remained separate, was absorbed and in 1812 the name was changed to the Corps of Royal Sappers and Miners. The Corps has no battle honours. In 1832, the regimental motto, Ubique, and Quo Fas et Gloria Ducunt everywhere, and Where Right and Glory Led, in Latin Fas implies sacred duty, was granted. The motto signified that the Corps had seen action in all the major conflicts of the British Army and almost all of the minor ones as well. In 1855, the Board of Ordnance was abolished and authority over the Royal Engineers, Royal Sappers and Miners, and Royal Artillery was transferred to the Commander in Chief of the Forces, thus uniting them with the rest of the Army. The following year, the Royal Engineers and Royal Sappers and Miners became a unified corps as the Corps of Royal Engineers and their headquarters were moved from the Royal Arsenal, Woolwich, to Chatham, Kent. The reorganization of the British military that began in the mid-19th century and stretched over several decades included the reconstitution of the militia, the raising of the volunteer force, and the ever closer organization of the part-time forces with the regular army. The old militia had been an infantry force, other than the occasional employment of militiamen to man artillery defences and other roles on an emergency basis. This changed in 1861, with the conversion of some units to artillery roles. Militia and volunteer engineering companies were also created, beginning with the conversion of the militia of Anglesey and Monmouthshire to engineers in 1877. The militia and volunteer force engineers supported the regular Royal Engineers in a variety of roles, including operating the boats required to tend the submarine mine defences that protected harbours in Britain and its empire. These included a submarine mining militia company that was authorised for Bermuda in 1892, but never raised, and the Bermuda volunteer engineers that wore Royal Engineers uniforms and replaced the regular Royal Engineers companies withdrawn from the Bermuda garrison in 1928. The various part-time reserve forces were amalgamated into the Territorial Force in 1908, which was retitled the Territorial Army after the First World War, and the Army Reserve in 2014. In 1911 the Corps formed its Air Battalion, the first flying unit of the British Armed Forces. The Air Battalion was the forerunner of the Royal Flying Corps and Royal Air Force. In 1915, in response to German mining of British trenches under the then static siege conditions of the First World War, the Corps formed its own tunneling companies. Manned by experienced coal miners from across the country, they operated with great success until 1917, when after the fixed positions broke, they built deep dugouts such as the Vampire Dugout to protect troops from heavy shelling. Before the Second World War, Royal Engineers recruits were required to be at least 5 feet 4 inches tall, 5 feet 2 inches for the mounted branch. 
They initially enlisted for six years with the Colors and a further six years with the Reserve or four years and eight years. Unlike most corps and regiments, in which the upper age limit was 25, men could enlist in the Royal Engineers up to 35 years of age. They trained at the Royal Engineers Depot in Chatham or the Re-Mounted Depot at Aldershot. During the 1980s, the Royal Engineers formed the vital component of at least three engineer brigades, 12th Engineer Brigade Airfield Damage Repair, 29th Engineer Brigade, and 30th Engineer Brigade. After the Falklands War, 37 Engineer Regiment was active from August 1982 until 14 March 1985. Topic. Regimental Museum The Royal Engineers Museum is in Gillingham in Kent. Topic. Significant constructions Britain having acquired an empire, it fell to the Royal Engineers to conduct some of the most significant civil engineering schemes around the world. Some examples of great works of the era of empire can be found in A. J. Smithers's book Honourable Conquests. <laughs> <laughs> British Columbia The Royal Engineers, Columbia Detachment, commanded by Richard Clement Moody, was responsible for the foundation and settlement of British Columbia as the colony of British Columbia. <laughs> <laughs> Royal Albert Hall The Royal Albert Hall is one of the UK's most treasured and distinctive buildings, recognisable the world over. Since its opening by Queen Victoria in 1871, the world's leading artists from every kind of performance genre have appeared on its stage. Each year it hosts more than 350 performances including classical concerts, rock and pop, ballet and opera, tennis, award ceremonies, school and community events, charity performances and lavish banquets. The hall was designed by Captain Francis Fauci and Major General Henry Y. D. Scott of the Royal Engineers and built by Lucas Brothers. The designers were heavily influenced by ancient amphitheaters, but had also been exposed to the ideas of Gottfried Semper while he was working at the Victoria and Albert Museum. Topic. Indian infrastructure Much of the British colonial era infrastructure of India, of which elements survive today, was created by engineers of the three presidencies' armies and the Royal Engineers. Lieutenant later General Sir Arthur Thomas Cotton 1803 Madras Engineers, was responsible for the design and construction of the great irrigation works on the River Kaveri, which watered the rice crops of Tanjore and Trichinopoly districts in the late 1820s. In 1838 he designed and built sea defences for Visagapatam. He masterminded the Godavari Delta project where 720,000 acres 2,900 square kilometres of land were irrigated and 500 miles 800 kilometres of land to the port of Kokanada was made navigable in the 1840s. Such regard for his lasting legacy was shown when in 1983, the Indian government erected a statue in his memory at Dowelswaram. Other irrigation and canal projects included the Ganges Canal, where Colonel Sir Colin Scott Mancreef acted as the chief engineer and made modifications to the original work. Among other engineers trained in India, Scott Mancreef went on to become Under Secretary of State Public Works, Egypt where he restored the Nile Barrage and irrigation works of Lower Egypt. <inaudible> Rideau Canal The construction of the Rideau Canal was proposed shortly after the War of 1812, when there remained a persistent threat of attack by the United States on the British colony of Upper Canada. 
The initial purpose of the Rideau Canal was military, as it was intended to provide a secure supply and communications route between Montreal and the British naval base in Kingston, Ontario. Westward from Montreal, travel would proceed along the Ottawa River to B-Town now Ottawa, then southwest via the canal to Kingston and out into Lake Ontario. The objective was to bypass the stretch of the St. Lawrence River bordering New York State, a route which would have left British supply ships vulnerable to attack or a blockade of the St. Lawrence. The construction of the canal was supervised by Lt. Col. John By of the Royal Engineers. In 2007 it was inscribed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site recognizing it as a work of human creative genius. The Rideau Canal was recognized as the best preserved example of a slack water canal in North America demonstrating the use of European slackwater technology in North America on a large scale. Lieutenant Dennison was one of the junior royal engineers who worked under Lieutenant Colonel John By, Re on the Rideau Canal in Upper Canada 1826-1832. Of note, Denison carried out experiments under the direction of Lieutenant Colonel By to determine the strength, for construction purposes of the old growth timber in the vicinity of B-Town. His findings were published by the Institution of Civil Engineers in England who bestowed upon him the prestigious Telford Medal. <laughs> Dover's Western Heights The Western Heights of Dover are one of the most impressive fortifications in Britain. They comprise a series of forts, strong points and ditches, designed to protect the United Kingdom from invasion. They were created to augment the existing defences and protect the key port of Dover from both seaward and landward attack. First given earthworks in 1779 against the planned invasion that year, the high ground west of Dover, England, now called Dover Western Heights, was properly fortified in 1804 when Lieutenant Colonel William Twiss was instructed to modernise the existing defences. This was part of a huge programme of fortification in response to Napoleon's planned invasion of the United Kingdom. To assist with the movement of troops between Dover Castle and the town defences Twiss made his case for building the Grand Shaft in the cliff. The new barracks are little more than 300 yards horizontally from the beach and about 180 feet 55 meters above high water mark, but in order to communicate with them from the center of town, on horseback the distance is nearly a mile and a half and to walk it about three quarters of a mile, and all the roads unavoidably pass over ground more than 100 feet 30 meters above the barracks, besides the footpaths are so steep and chalky that a number of accidents will unavoidably happen during the wet weather and more especially especially after floods. I am therefore induced to recommend the construction of a shaft, with a triple staircase, the chief objective of which is the convenience and safety of troops, and may eventually be useful in sending reinforcements to troops or in affording them a secure retreat." Twiss's plan was approved and building went ahead. The shaft was to be 26 feet 7.9 meters in diameter, 140 feet 43 meters deep with a 180 feet 55 meters gallery connecting the bottom of the shaft to Snargate Street, and all for under an estimated 4,000 pounds. The plan entailed building two brick-lined shafts, one inside the other. In the outer would be built a triple staircase, the inner acting as a light well with windows cut in its outer wall to illuminate the staircases. Apparently, by March 1805 only 40 feet 12 meters of the connecting gallery was left to dig and it is probable that the project was completed by 1807. Topic. Pentonville Prison Two Acts of Parliament allowed for the building of Pentonville Prison for the detention of convicts sentenced to imprisonment or awaiting transportation. Construction started on 10 April 1840 and was completed in 1842. The cost was £84,186.12 2d. 
Captain later Major General Sir Joshua Jebb designed Pentonville Prison, introducing new concepts such as single cells with good heating, ventilation and sanitation. Topic: <laughs> Boundary Commissions. Although mapping by what became the Ordnance Survey was born out of military necessity it was soon realized that accurate maps could be also used for civil purposes. The lessons learnt from this first boundary commission were put to good use around the world where members of the Corps have determined boundaries on behalf of the British as well as foreign governments. Some notable boundary commissions include 1839 Canada United States 1858 Canada United States Captain later General Sir John Hawkins Re 1856 and 1857 Russo-Turkish Lieutenant Colonel later Sir Edward Stanton Re 1857 Russo-Turkish Colonel later Field Marshal Sir Lintorn Simmons Re 1878 Bulgarian 1880 Greco-Turkish Major later Major General Sir John Ardagri 1884 Russo-Afghan Captain later Colonel Sir Thomas Holditch Re 1894 India Afghanistan Captain later Colonel Sir Thomas Holditch Re 1902 Chile Argentine Colonel Sir Delm Radcliffe Re 1911 Peru Bolivia Major A. J. Woodruff Re Much of this work continues to this day. The reform of the voting franchise brought about by the Reform Act 1832 demanded that boundary commissions were set up. Lieutenants Dawson and Thomas Drummond 1797 to 1839 Royal Engineers were employed to gather the statistical information upon which the bill was founded as well as determining the boundaries and districts of boroughs. It was said that the fate of numerous boroughs fell victim to the heliostat and the Drummond light, the instrument that Drummond invented whilst surveying in Ireland. <inaudible> Abney Level An Abney Level is an instrument used in surveying which consists of a fixed sighting tube, a movable spirit level that is connected to a pointing arm, and a protractor scale. The Abney level is an easy-to-use, relatively inexpensive, and when used correctly an accurate surveying tool. The Abney level was invented by Sir William de Wivelesley Abney 1843-1920 who was a royal engineer, an English astronomer and chemist best known for his pioneering of color photography and color vision. Abney invented this instrument under the employment of the Royal School of Military Engineering in Chatham, England, in the 1870s. <laughs> HM Dockyards In 1873, Captain Henry Brander III was appointed Director of the Department of Architecture and Civil Engineering, later the Admiralty Works Department. Following this appointment many Royal Engineer officers superintended engineering works at Royal Navy dockyards in various parts of the world, including the Royal Naval Dockyard, Bermuda. Topic Chatham Dockyard Chatham, being the home of the Corps, meant that the Royal Engineers and the dockyard had a close relationship since Captain Branderth's appointment. At the Chatham Dockyard, Captain Thomas Mould Ree designed the iron roof trusses for the covered slips, 4, 5 and 6. Slip 7 was designed by Colonel Godfrey Green Ree on his move to the Corps from the Bengal Sappers and Miners. In 1886 Major Henry Pilkington Ree was appointed Superintendent of Engineering at the Dockyard, moving on to Director of Engineering at the Admiralty in 1890 and Engineer-in-Chief of Naval Loan Works, where he was responsible for the extension of all major dockyards at home and abroad. Topic trades All members of the Royal Engineers are trained combat engineers and all sappers privates and non-commissioned officers also have another trade. 
These trades include, air conditioning fitter, electrician, general fitter, plant operator mechanic, plumber, bricklayer, plasterer, painter, carpenter and joiner, fabricator, building materials technician, design droughtsman, electrical and mechanical droughtsman, geographic support technician, survey engineer, armored engineer, driver, engineer IT, engineer logistics specialist, amphibious engineer, bomb disposal specialist, diver or search specialist. They may also undertake the specialist selection and training to qualify as commandos or military parachutists. Women are eligible for all Royal Engineer specialities. <laughs> <laughs> Units Topic brigades and groups 8th Engineer Brigade 12 Force Support Group 21 Engineer Regiment 28 Engineer Regiment 32 Engineer Regiment 36 Engineer Regiment 39 Engineer Regiment 25 Close Support Engineer Group Under Operational Command of 3rd Division 22 Engineer Regiment 3 Armored Engineer Squadron 5 Field Squadron 6 Headquarters Squadron 26 Engineer Regiment 8 Armored Engineer Squadron 30 Armored Engineer Squadron 38 HQ and Support Squadron 29 EOD and Search Group 33 Engineer Regiment EOD 35 Engineer Regiment EOD formerly 35 Armored Engineer Regiment 101 City of London Engineer Regiment Reserve 11 Explosive Ordnance Disposal and Search Regiment RLC 1 Military Working Dog Regiment 170 Infrastructure Support Engineer Group Previously Military Works Force 42 Headquarters and Support Squadron 20 Works Group 510 STRE Airfields 529 STRE Air Support 531 STRE Airfields 532 STRE Air Support 534 STRE Airfields 62 Works Group 508 STRE Weeks 519 STRE Weeks 522 STRE TRE weeks 523 STRE weeks 524 STRE weeks 63 works group 517 STRE weeks 518 STRE weeks 525 STRE weeks 527 STRE weeks 535 STRE weeks 65 works group 503 STRE FP 504 STRE P 506 STRE W 507 STRE R 509 STRE Pi 526 STRE Weeks 66 Works Group 502 STRE FP 516 STRE BP 521 STRE WD 528 STRE P 530 STRE M Topic regiments 21 Engineer Regiment, 7 Headquarters and Support Squadron 1 Field Squadron Squadron 4 Field Squadron Squadron 106 West Riding Field Squadron Sheffield, Bradford Royal Electrical and Mechanical Engineers Light Aid Detachment 22 Engineer Regiment, 6 Headquarters and Support Squadron 3 Armored Engineer Squadron 5 Armored Engineer Squadron 52 Armored Engineer Squadron Royal Electrical and Mechanical Mechanical Engineers Light Aid Detachment 23 Parachute Engineer Regiment, part of 16 Air Assault Brigade 12 Nova Scotia Parachute Headquarters and Support Squadron 9 Parachute Squadron 51 Parachute Squadron 299 Para Field, Squadron Reserve Wakefield, Hull, Gateshead 24 Commando Engineer Regiment, part of 3 Commando Brigade, Royal Marines based at Shivana. Formed in 2008 as part of the Delivering Security in a Changing World Review, when the engineering support for 3 Commando Brigade was increased to a full regiment. 54 Commando Squadron 59 Commando Squadron 131 Commando Squadron Reserve based in Kingsbury, Plymouth, Birmingham and Bath 26 Engineer Regiment, 38 Headquarters and Support Squadron 8 Armored Engineer Squadron 30 Armored Engineer Squadron 33 Armored 
Engineer Squadron 28 Engineer Regiment CBRN 32 Engineer Regiment 2 Headquarters and Support Squadron 26 Armored Engineer Squadron 31 Armored Engineer Squadron 33 Engineer Regiment Explosive Ordnance Disposal Hybrid Regiment with Regular and Army Reserve Squadrons 58 Field Squadron EOD 217 London Field Squadron EOD V Holloway 350 Field Squadron Air Support Nottingham 821 Field Squadron EOD EOC Group 35 Engineer Regiment Disbandment of this unit was announced in December 2016 it will return from Germany and re-roll as an EOD search regiment, 29 and 37 AES will move to 21 and 32 engineer regiment as part of this re-roll. 44 Headquarters and Support Squadron 29 Armored Engineer Squadron 37 Armored Engineer Squadron 77 Armored Engineer Squadron 36 Engineer Regiment, 50 Headquarters and Support Squadron 20 Field Squadron 69 Gurkha Field, Squadron 70 Gurkha Field, Support Squadron 39 Engineer Regiment, 60 Headquarters and Support Squadron Air Support 10 Field Squadron Air Support 34 Field Squadron Air Support 48 Field Squadron Air Support 53 Field Squadron Air Support Ream Workshop 42 Engineer Regiment Geographic 13 Geographic Squadron 14 Geographic Squadron 16 Geographic Support Squadron 135 Geographic Squadron Reserve 71 Engineer Regiment 10 Orkney Troop Kirkwall RHQ Lukers Station 102 Field Squadron Paisley Barnesford Bridge 100 103 First Newcastle Field Squadron Newcastle Sunderland 124 Field Support Squadron Cumbernauld Lukehurst Kinloss and Orkney 236 Troop Kinloss Barracks 591 Antrim Artillery Field Squadron Bangor NE 75 Engineer Regiment Field 107 Lancashire and Cheshire Field Squadron Birkenhead 202 Field Support Squadron Manchester 412 Amphibious Engineer Engineer Troop Volunteers Reserve Minden 101 City of London Engineer Regiment Explosive Ordnance Disposal Hybrid Regiment with Regular and Army Reserve Squadrons 22 Headquarters and Support Squadron EOD 17 Field Squadron EOD 21 Field Squadron EOD 221 Field Squadron EOD V Rochester Catford 579 Field Squadron EOD V Tunbridge Wells Royal Monmouthshire Royal Engineers Militia RHQ Troop Monmouth 100 Field Squadron Cambron Bristol Cardiff 108 W Field Squadron Swansea 225 Field Squadron Birmingham Jersey Field Squadron Street Hellier Engineer and Logistics Staff Corps Volunteers The Nottinghamshire Band of the Royal Engineers Nottingham Topic the Royal School of Military Engineering The Royal School of Military Engineering is the British Army's Centre of Excellence for Military Engineering, Explosive Ordnance Disposal EOD, and Counter-Terrorist Search Training. Located on several sites in Chatham, Kent, Camberley in Surrey and Bicester in Oxfordshire the Royal School of Military Engineering offers superb training facilities for the full range of Royal Engineer skills. The RSME was founded by Major later General Sir Charles Pasley, as the Royal Engineer Establishment in 1812. It was renamed the School of Military Engineering in 1868 and granted the Royal prefix in 1962 Royal School of Military Engineering Combat Engineer School 3 Royal School of Military Engineering Regiment 55 Training Squadron Royal Engineers 57 Training Squadron Royal Engineers 63 Training Support Squadron Royal Engineers Communication Information Systems Wing Construction Engineer School 1 Royal School of Military Engineering Regiment 24 Training Squadron Royal Engineers 36 Training Squadron Royal Engineers Civil Engineering Wing Electrical and Mechanical Wing 
Royal Engineers Warfare Wing founded in 2011 and split between Brompton Barracks, Chatham and Gibraltar Barracks at Minley in Hampshire, this is the product of the amalgamation between Command Wing, where Command and Tactics were taught and Battlefield Engineering Wing, where Combat Engineering Training was facilitated. United Kingdom Mine Information and Training Center Defense Explosive Munitions and Search School, formerly Defense EOD School and the National Search Center. 28 Training Squadron, Army Training Regiment. Diving Training Unit, Army DTU. A. Band of the Corps of Royal Engineers. The band are part of the Corps of Army Music, but wear the uniform of the Royal Engineers. Topic. Corps Ensign The Royal Engineers, Ports Section, operated harbours and ports for the Army and used mainly specialised vessels such as tugs and dredgers. During the Second World War the Royal Engineers Blue Ensign was flown from the Mulberry Harbours. <laughs> Bishop Gundolf, Rochester and King's Engineers Bishop Gundolf, a monk from the Abbey of Beck in Normandy came to England in 1070 as Archbishop Lafrancy's assistant at Canterbury. His talent for architecture had been spotted by King William I and was put to good use in Rochester, where he was sent as bishop in 1077. Almost immediately the king appointed him to supervise the construction of the White Tower, now part of the Tower of London in 1078. Under William Rufus he also undertook building work on Rochester Castle. Having served three kings of England and earning the favour of them all, Gundolf is accepted as the first king's engineer. The Institution of Royal Engineers The Institution of Royal Engineers, the professional institution of the Corps of Royal Engineers, was established in 1875 and in 1923 it was granted its royal charter by King George V. The institution is collocated with the Royal Engineers Museum, within the grounds of the Royal School of Military Engineering at Brompton in Chatham, Kent. The history of the Corps of Royal Engineers is currently in its twelfth volume. The first two volumes were written by Major General Whitworth Porter and published in 1889. The Sapper is published by the Royal Engineers Central Charitable Trust and is a bi monthly magazine for all ranks. The Royal Engineers Association The Royal Engineers Association was formed to promote and support the Corps among members of the association in the following ways. By fostering esprit de corps and a spirit of comradeship and service. By maintaining an awareness of corps traditions. By acting as a link between serving and retired members of the Corps. To provide financial and other assistance to serving and former members of the Corps, their wives, widows and dependents who are in need through poverty. To make grants, within association guidelines, to the Army Benevolent Fund and to other charities which further the objectives of the association. Topic. Sport. Topic. Royal Engineers Yacht Club The Royal Engineers Yacht Club, which dates back to 1812, promotes the skill of watermanship in the Royal Engineers. Topic. Royal Engineers Amateur Football Club The club was founded in 1863, under the leadership of Major Francis Marindon. Sir Frederick Wall, who was the secretary of the Football Association 1895-1934, stated in his memoirs that the "'Combination Game' was first used by the Royal Engineers AFC in the early 1870s. Wall states that the "'Sappers moved in unison' 
and showed the advantages of combination over the old style of individualism. Topic <laughs> FA Cup. The engineers played in the first ever FA Cup final in 1872, losing 1-0 at Kennington Oval on the 16th of March 1872 to regular rivals Wanderers. They also lost the 1874 FA Cup final to Oxford University AFC. Their greatest triumph was the 1874-75 FA Cup. In the final against Old Etonians, they drew 1-1 with a goal from Rennie Taylor and went on to win the replay 2-0 with a goal each from Rennie Taylor and Stafford. Their last FA Cup final appearance came in 1878, again losing to the Wanderers. They last participated in 1882-83 FA Cup, losing 6-2 in the fourth round to Old Carthusians FC. The Engineers Depot Battalion won the FA Amateur Cup in 1908. On the 7th of November 2012, the Royal Engineers played against the Wanderers in a remake of the 1872 FA Cup final at the Oval. Unlike the actual final, the Engineers won, and by a large margin, 7-1 being the final score. Topic. Rugby The Army were represented in the very first international by two members of the Royal Engineers, both playing for England, Lieutenant Charles Arthur Crompton Ree and Lieutenant Charles Sherard Ree. Topic. Successor units Several units have been formed from the Royal Engineers. The Air Battalion Royal Engineers formed 1911 was the precursor of the Royal Flying Corps formed 1912 which evolved into the Royal Air Force in 1918. The Telegraph Troop, founded in 1870, became the Telegraph Battalion Royal Engineers who then became the Royal Engineers Signals Service, which in turn became the Independent Royal Corps of Signals in 1920. The Royal Engineers were responsible for railway and inland waterway transport, port operations and movement control until 1965, when these functions were transferred to the new Royal Corps of Transport. See also Railway Operating Division. The Royal Corps of Transport merged into the Royal Logistic Corps in 1993. In 1913, the Army Post Office Corps formed in 1882 and the Royal Engineers Telegraph Reserve formed in 1884 amalgamated to form the Royal Engineers Postal Section Special Reserve. This later became the Defence Postal and Courier Service and remained part of the RE until the formation of the Royal Logistic Corps in 1993 c British Forces Post Office. <laughs> Notable personnel Category – Royal Engineers Soldiers Category – Royal Engineers Officers Topic. Engineering equipment Topic. Order of precedence Topic. Decorations Topic. Victoria Cross The following Royal Engineers have been awarded the Victoria Cross VC, the highest and most prestigious award for gallantry in the face of the enemy that can be awarded to British and Commonwealth forces. Tom Edwin Adlam, 1916, Thiepval, France Adam Archibald, 1918, Ors, France Fenton John Aylmer, 1891, Nilt Fort, India. Mark Sever Bell, 1874, Battle of Ordashu, Ashanti, now Ghana. John Rouse Marriott Chard, 1879, Rourke's Drift, South Africa. Brett McKay Cloutman, 1918, Pont-sur-Sambre, France. 
Clifford Coffin, 1917, West Hook, Belgium. James Morris Calhoun Colvin, 1897, Momond Valley, India. James Lennox Dawson, 1915, Hohenzollern Redoubt, France. Robert James Thomas Digby Jones, 1900 Ladysmith, South Africa Thomas Frank Dorant, 1942, Street. Nazaire, France Howard Crawford Elphinstone, 1855, Sevastopol, Crimea George de Cardonal Elmsall Finlay, 1918, Catalan, France Gerald Graham, 1855, Sevastopol, Crimea William Hackett, 1916, Givenchy, France Reginald Clare Hart, 1879, Bazaar Valley, Afghanistan Lenoy Hawker, 1915, while serving with the RFC Charles Alfred Jarvis, 1914, Gemaps, Belgium Frederick Henry Johnson, 1915, Hill 70, France William Henry Johnston, 1914, Missy, France Frank Howard Kirby, 1900, Delagoa Bay Railway, South Africa Cecil Leonard Knox, 1918, Tugney, France Edward Pemberton Leach, 1879, Maidana, Afghanistan Peter Leach, 1855, Sevastopol, Crimea William James Lendrum, 1855, Sevastopol, Crimea Wilbraham Oates Lennox, 1854, Sevastopol, Crimea Henry MacDonald, 1855, Sevastopol, Crimea Cyril Gordon Martin, 1915, Spanbroekmalen on the Messines Ridge, Belgium James McPhee, 1918, Abenchul OBAC, France Philip Neem, 1914, Neuve Chapelle, France. John Perry, 1855, Sevastopol, Crimea. Claude Raymond, 1945, Talaku, Burma, now Myanmar. John Ross, 1855, Sevastopol, Crimea. Michael Slevin, 1858, Jhansi, India. Arnold Horace Santo Waters, 1918, Ors, France. Thomas Colclough Watson, 1897, Mammond Valley, India Theodore Wright, 1914, Mons, Belgium The Sapper VCs In 1998, HMSO published an account of the 55 British and Commonwealth sappers who have been awarded the Victoria Cross. The book was written by Colonel G. W. A. Napier, former Royal Engineers officer and a former director of the Royal Engineers Museum. The book defines a sapper as any member of a British or Empire military engineer corps, whatever their rank, speciality or national allegiance and is thus not confined to royal engineers. Topic. Memorials Rochester Cathedral, Kent has major historical links with the Corps and contains many memorials including stained glass, mosaics and plaques. The cathedral hosts services on the annual Corps Memorial Weekend and is supported by the Corps on Remembrance Sunday. Royal Engineers First World War Memorial at La Ferté Sous Joery National Memorial Arboretum at Alrewas, Staffordshire The Memorial to the Royal Engineers at Aramanches, the site of the Mulberry Harbours during the Second World War See also Mine Information Training Center Royal Engineers, Columbia Detachment Bermuda Volunteer Engineers, a territorial unit that replaced the regular Army Re Companies of the Bermuda Garrison in 1930. Disbanded 1946. Canadian Military Engineers, created in 1903 to provide a replacement for the Re in Canada. List of International Professional Associations 
The Association of British Columbia Land Surveyors Institution of Engineers AVRE